imaginary numbers. If you recall, subtraction was invented to undo addition. The new operation of subtraction forced us to ask new questions. The number system before subtraction did not include negative numbers. As a result of the new operation, a number system with negatives was created to give meaning to subtraction. The new question, what, if, what is the result of subtracting 7 from 4, required a new picture to tell the story. It was subtraction that led to the invention of negative numbers. They were called negative from the Latin negra, which means to deny, since people denied that such numbers could exist. They weren't used much until the Renaissance and were only fully accepted in the 1800s. The inverse operation of raising a number to a power is to take the root of that number. The new system of numbers includes the negative numbers, and this leads to a new question. What is the square root of a negative number? We don't have a simple answer to that question because no real number squared yields a negative number, unless of course we extend our number system to include numbers that answer the question. Reminder, the square root theorem allowed us to find solutions to a quadratic equation. Here it is again. If x squared equals m, then x equals plus or minus the square root of m, provided that m is greater or equal to zero. Note, the square root theorem requires that we take the square root of non-negative numbers. This restriction is the result of a number system that was limiting. Let there be a new number i, called the imaginary number, that has the following two properties. i squared equals negative 1, and i equals the square root of negative 1. By the square root theorem, if x squared equals negative 1, then x equals positive or negative i. There are two solutions as there was before i squared equals negative 1 by the definition above. So negative i squared equals negative i times negative i, which equals negative 1 times i times negative 1 times i, which is i squared equals negative 1. The primary solution is i, and the secondary solution is negative i. Let a real number be represented by an arrow attached to the origin. Positive numbers point to the right, and negative numbers to the left. The length of the arrow is a scalar, or the number's absolute value. We learned earlier that multiplying an int integer by negative 1 doesn't change its absolute value, but reverses its sign, or direction. So multiplying 7 by negative 1 equals negative 7. The new number is the same distance from 0, but in the opposite direction. With the advent of the imaginary number, there was a desire to create a visual metaphor to explain it. Mathematicians came up with a new way of imagining what it means to multiply by i squared, which equals negative 1. Rather than multiplication by negative 1 explained as an arrow in the opposite direction, the new metaphor involved rotating the arrow 180 degrees counterclockwise about the origin. The results are the same, but the way one imagines arriving at the result is quite different. If multiplying by i squared is explained as counterclockwise rotation of 180 degrees, what might a counterclockwise rotation of 90 degrees mean? By letting multiplication by i mean rotating the arrow 90 degrees counterclockwise about the origin, a new dimension is introduced. If multiplying by i is explained as a counterclockwise rotation of 90 degrees, what might a clockwise rotation of 90 degrees mean? By letting multiplication by negative i mean rotating the arrow 90 degrees clockwise about the origin, the result is shown above. Let multiplication by i be a counterclockwise rotation of a number 90 degrees. Let multiplication by negative i be a clockwise rotation of a number 90 degrees. Multiplying by i and by i again, rotate counterclockwise twice 90 degrees for a total of 180 degrees. This explanation satisfies why i squared equals negative 1. Multiplying by negative i and by negative i again, rotate clockwise twice 90 degrees or 180 degrees. This satisfies negative i squared equals negative 1. The horizontal axis is called the real axis and includes all the real numbers. The numbers on the vertical axis are called the imaginary numbers. All numbers have direction and all have a scalar. There are four numbers shown below for your review. So this would be 6, this would be 4i, this would be negative 8, and this would be negative 3i. Just as people couldn't originally think of how zero or negative numbers could be used, they also couldn't see how imaginary numbers would be of value. Mathematicians argued for centuries about imaginary numbers before coming to agreement about their existence and uses. Imaginary numbers provide to be very useful in real-world applications. 
It turns out that many physical systems, including alternating current electrical systems, rely on an understanding of imaginary numbers. If you think about it, if I didn't have any useful applications, it likely would never have been discovered. Repeated multiplying by negative 1 produces a pattern. 1, negative 1, 1, negative 1, 1, etc. Now let's consider what happens when we multiply by i repeatedly. i is the square root of negative 1 times i would be negative 1, because the square root of negative 1 times the square root of negative 1 will give us negative 1. If we then multiply negative 1 times i, we get negative i. If we then multiply negative i times i, we get 1. If we multiply that times i, we get i. And then i times i again gives us negative 1, and it repeats. So we have negative 1, then negative i, 1, i, negative 1, negative i, 1, i, etc. The number i to the n for integer n can be simplified into i, negative 1, negative i, or 1. If the power n of i to the n is even, and the exponent is a multiple of 4, then it simplifies to 1. If the exponent is a multiple of 2 but not 4, then it simplifies to negative 1. If the power n of i to the n is odd, factor out i to create a product of i and an even power of i. Use the rules for even exponents to simplify and the result is i or negative i. Let's see how to simplify these on the next slide. i to the 87th power. All right, so we'll take out one i, so we have i times i to the 86th power. 86 is an even exponent that's a multiple of 2 but not 4. So we can write this as i to the 2 to the 43rd power, because 43 times 2 is 86, times i. i to the second power simplifies to negative 1 to the 43rd power, then multiplied times i again. Negative 1 to the 43rd power is negative 1, times i gives us negative i. Here we have i to the 64th. So we can take 2 out, and we have 2 times 32 here. i to the second power is negative 1. Negative 1 to the 32nd power will give us positive 1. Negative i to the 18th power. First, let's factor out the negative sign, and we'll factor out an i to the second power. That leaves us with a 9. i to the second power simplifies to negative 1. So we still have that negative sign out front and that ninth power. Negative 1 to the ninth power, because that's odd, leaves us with negative 1. But this negative sign cancels out that negative sign, and we are left with positive 1. Here we have negative i to the 27th power. So we'll factor out a negative sign from the front, and we'll remove one of the i's so that we have i to the 26th times i. i to the 26th can be simplified to i to the second times the to the 13th power. So i to the second simplifies to negative 1. We are left with that 13th power there. Uh, negative 1 to the 13th power, since that's an odd exponent, will still be negative 1. So the negative sign out front here, though, is going to cancel out those negative signs. We're going to get a positive 1 times i, which is positive i. Simplify each of the following. All right, so i squared is negative 1. So we'll say plus, and then we're going to write i squared squared, because 2 times 2 is 4. So i squared is going to be negative 1. However, once we then raise it to an even power, this will become positive 1. So this will be negative 1 plus positive 1, since we had negative 1 squared, which made that regular positive 1. And so that will equal 0. Next. First, we take out the 5, then we write i to the 105th power. All right, so then we're going to remove one of these i's, so we're going to factor it out. So it'll become i to the 104th power times i, so these are equivalent. Then we're going to take it, say 5, then we'll make this i squared and then raise that to the 52nd power, because 2 times 52 gives us 104. So these are equivalents, and we still have that i out, out, out here. All right, now, i squared is negative 1. 
However, we're then raising this to an even power, which means that this will become positive 1. So this is 5 times positive 1 times i. That gives us 5i. All right, moving on. 8 times i to the 102nd power. So 8 times i to the second power. Do you see I'm skipping a step here? i to the second power raised to the 51st power. So these are the same. i to the 102 power is the same as i to the second power raised to the 51st power. So i squared is negative 1 raised to an odd exponent. Well, this will remain negative 1. So it will be 8 times negative 1, which is negative 8. Negative i to the 89th power. All right, so we have negative sign up front. We'll then remove one i from this. So we'll have i to the 88th power times i. So this i to the 88th power times i gives us i to the 89th power. Now we're going to turn this into i squared. So we have negative i to the second power to raised to the 44th power because we 2 times 44 gives us 88. And we still have that i left over over here. All right, so i squared is negative 1 raised to an even power, this will become positive. So that will be negative parentheses positive 1 times i. This gives us negative i. And finally, i to the 4 millionth power. All right, so we could rewrite this as i to the second power raised to the 2 millionth power, or doesn't even really matter. It's even. So we're raising this to an even power. i squared is negative 1, but raised to an even power, no matter what that number is or how large it is, it will become positive 1. 0, 5i, negative 8, negative i, and 1.